locally we, we have this issue of minimum wage at the moment mm -hmm. that's a discussion that's ongoing how will you address that would you address that through the that association uh, or will the embassy sort of address that directly well on our part i was interviewed by someone already on minimum wage so i shared my my um my thing there with regards to me being one of one of us number one as an employer and number two as an employee as well so i, I shared my understanding on it and what's going to be the effect on my part as an employer at the same time as part is part of us being an employee and then i also gave them some uh, volunteers to be interviewed in different sectors i gave them uh, contact persons for domestic helpers i also gave them contacts for security guards i also gave them uh, contacts to different different uh, even in the hospitality area so that's what we did in the communities to gather people that they can reach out to interview so that we can at least have an input in the upcoming uh, talk about the um, minimum wage so yeah. the minimum wage advisor committee is currently meeting mm -hmm. in different districts so it would be good if your association attended mm -hmm. so not just yourself as an individual mm -hmm. but the association attends to to let the committee know what okay. the issues are yeah. uh, because it's important to provide feedback in the process otherwise when the final decision mm -hmm. is made your input is not there that's why yeah. it's, so, it's so important yeah. to be involved um, at every step of the process do you think a wide number of Filipinos will be impacted by the change in the minimum wage yeah I am sure yeah I think it will in I, many ways yeah in many ways remember there are all uh, there are a lot of Filipinos here who work as a minimum wage here, especially in the um, especially in the um, what do you call it, restaurant areas there's a lot of Filipinos affected there uh, there are also some workers in the security security area that I was I was told how much they are being paid so I said I asked them I said how do you pay your rent how do you pay your rent I said you know I, mean, I just I just can't imagine that I just heard it recently actually I'm not aware of it um, but on the side of the employer because I'm, a, I'm an employer as well I said I think it's best that they need to really review it because uh, it's it's a it's a either or I mean it's a, it's a, it can affect the employer at the same time the employee so the, the on the side of the employer myself I told them that I need to hire quality people so that I can pay them more than what they're earning and they can live good here in Grand Cayman that's it yeah because it's the the rent here the cost of living here is so high right now I know that we have uh, Filipinos in the financial services industry as well. Yeah, yeah. Are, is your association in contact with them as well? Yes, yes, a lot of them, yeah. Do, do you think there are any particular policy changes that are needed or any legal changes to the Labor Act that would be beneficial to low-income workers? As far as I see and as far as the people are saying to me, most of these low-income earners, they're trying to survive only by, you know, renting room with, you know, right? I mean, more than two people in a room. Yeah. Just to pay uh, $500 a month room, they have to divide it by three so that they could survive at least staying in a bed. So, I mean, and then they have to send money back home for their families so that the children can uh, afford to school in a good school in the Philippines so that they will have a bright future. So... Uh, yeah, it's, it's a struggle for all these low-income earners, actually. Very strugg struggling. And then, added to that is, of course, the culture of Filipinos. I mean, these low-income earners are normally, we call masa, or the regular Filipinos, that are not really that talking. They just, they don't want to talk anything that will harm their employment status. They don't want to say anything that would impact their employers you know these are the nature of filipinas they just want to continue working as long as they're earning they can stay in small room they can eat they can send a little bit of money back home they're fine but this is why it's so important to have yeah the embassy I mean, yeah. involved yeah. in the contracts yeah. as well right yeah 
to give them more security. Yeah. So the people who aren't saying anything, is it because of a cultural reason or is it because they didn't register? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure about that, but that's what I think. It's just my personal opinion that most low-income earning Filipinos, they're not that, you know, uh, what do you call this? Eagerness to talk about it. They just stay quiet and then they're not going to say anything because it can affect their employment. That's what they feel, yeah. So while you may feel that this is a unique thing to the Filipino community. This happens in the Latino community. Mm -hmm. It happens in other communities here because when people come here, what, what locals see as a low wage mm -hmm. is actually an improvement for other people coming from other countries. Mm -hmm. And so some people feel so grateful to have the opportunity to send more money home mm -hmm. and to help their family, to buy a property, to start a business, that they sometimes don't complain. Mm -hmm. But I think that we need to build a system where people have confidence that someone is looking up for them, which is yeah. Yeah. what Labour Attache, Attache is doing, mm -hmm. um, along with um, Ms. Cordila. So I, I think it's, it's critical that perhaps your association do more outreach to ensure that everyone understands, rather than live in fear about saying something and get into trouble. Yeah. So more outreach to let them know that you're here to help them, right?